Soldering is a skill that's useful in the workshop in a large variety of applications. There's electronics, there's plumbing, there's jewelry making, and then probably many, many other types of applications if you once you learn the skill and put your mind to how it can be used. In this episode of House of Hacks, we're going to talk about soldering in general, regardless of what you're soldering, and give examples both with electronics and plumbing. Let's get started. Hi, makers, builders, and do-it-yourselfers. Harley here. Today we're going to talk about soldering, kind of on a general principles level, where that can be applied to a lot of different uh, applications. The primary applications probably for most people in a DIY kind of environment are going to be electronics, plumbing, and jewelry making, with maybe a couple applications in automotive. The general principles of soldering apply across the board. So regardless of what you're soldering, once you've learned how to do it in one place, you can apply the same principles to someplace else. Usually the tools might be a little bit different, but how you do it remains the same. Before we get into the soldering itself, let's talk a little bit about the difference between welding, soldering, and brazing. So welding, you're taking two materials and you're actually bonding them together by melting the materials themselves. Usually there's a little bit of filler material, but the, the primary strength of the joint comes from the fact that you're melting the two pieces of metal together and, and it's essentially becoming one piece of metal. Brazing and soldering are both almost the same type of thing in terms of technique. The main difference is the type of filler material you use. With soldering, the, you use a low melting point filler material to join the two pieces of metal together. And usually this is below 450 degrees Celsius. Brazing, on the other hand, uses a high temperature filler material that's usually has a melting point above 450 degrees Celsius. And really the primary difference between the two is the strength of the connection. In soldering, because you have a lower melting point filler material, it's usually a softer material and it um, doesn't have as great a shear strength as brazing. Brazing, you have a, a higher melting point for the filler material and that gives you a subsequent higher shear strength of the joint itself. And so brazing is typically used in high strength type of applications. Uh, for example, making a bicycle frame. Uh, th those would type typically be brazed. Whereas plumbing, electronics, jewelry making don't, don't need the high strength application. And in fact, the components themselves may be damaged by too high a heat. And so a lower mol melting point works better. So now that we know the difference between the different techniques, let's look at the tools required for soldering. First of all, for electronics, you really don't need a whole lot. A basic soldering iron, will work and a little bit of solder. Electronic solder is really fine solder because it, you don't really need a whole lot of it. So a fine fine solder gives you a, makes it melt very quickly to keep from hitting up your electronics and causing damage to them. For plumbing, there's usually a little bit more tools required. You need a heat source. This is, this is map gas. You can also use propane. They both work equally well. The map gas just heats the joint up a little bit faster. It's quite a bit more expensive though. You need a way to clean the oxidation off the copper. And so one of these scrubbing brushes works really well. This particular brush has two sizes for both half inch pipe and three quarter inch pipe. And it has a, a brush like this that you use to clean on the inside of the connection and, and you use the, the hole on the outside for the outside part of the connection. And you two sizes there. These are really handy if you're gonna be doing much soldering of plumbing at all. You can also use sandpaper. You also need solder. Solder for plumbing is usually much thicker because you need more of it at any one point in time. It also does not have rosin in it. The electro electronics has um, a flux in it and the, the solder that is for plumbing usually does not. And so you also need flux. Usually it comes in a paste like this and you need a way to spread it. I usually use uh, little acid brushes or throwaway brushes, but I don't have any on hand. You can also use things like, in this case, I'm gonna use a popsicle stick. And some torches like this one require a separate flame to start. And so I have this little little scratch igniter. A lot, a lot of the newer um, nozzles have, have piezoelectric igniters in them, so you can just pull a trigger in it and ignites this flame. So the first thing we do is clean the connection. With electronics, typically we don't need to do this. Most components used in electronics don't require cleaning. If, it, if it's an old component, it's heavily oxidized, you might need a little bit of sandpaper or scrape it with a, a sharp edge. In plumbing, the copper tends to oxidize pretty, pretty quickly. And so you wanna bring it to a shine. This can either be done with sandpaper or I find real handy one of these brushes. 
Once the connection's cleaned, then we're ready to apply the flux. You only need to use flux as a separate step if the solder that you're using doesn't have the flux built into it. Most electronic solders have the flux built into it. So you don't need to do this with electronics. This is more for um, solders that are used in jewelry making and plumbing applications. So we just take a little bit of the flux and we just spread it around the, the connection. You don't want too much, but you don't want too little. It's just kind of a, a medium amount. What the flux does is it helps keep oxidation down right around the joint as it's being heated. And it allows the, the solder to flow smoothly into, the, into and around the connection and give you a good connection on the solder joint. Now that we have flux on there, if we need it, we apply heat to the joint. You wanna make sure that both halves of the connection are fitting together tightly and the way they're supposed to be. You don't wanna be heating up one and then trying to add the other to it. You, wanna, you want them both connected firmly to start and then apply heat to it. And once the connection is hot, you want to apply the solder from the opposite side of the heat. You want the heat of the connection itself to melt the solder, not the heat of the iron itself. You know the connection is at the right temperature when the solder melts into the connection rather than onto the heat source. And when the connection is at the right temperature, it'll, capillary action will just naturally pull the solder into the connection and give you a good solid connection. So soldering is really basic. There's not a whole lot of to it. It's really more in technique than, than difficulty of steps. The real key to getting a good, so, good solder connection is to make sure that the, the connection itself is melting the solder and not the heat source. In the next two days, I'm gonna be presenting tips. One day for electronic soldering tips and the other day plumbing soldering tips. So if that sounds interesting to you, subscribe and YouTube will notify you when those videos are up. If in general, if how-to videos about woodworking, metalworking, electronics, photography, general shop topics sounds interesting to you, I encourage you to go check out the channel. And if it's what you're interested in, subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, I wanna give you a great big thanks for joining, joining us on a regular basis. Thanks for joining me today on our creative journey. Until next time, go make something. Perfection's not required, fun is.